Hey folks, I seem to have misplaced my old passion for FDM printing somewhere between CNC machining and resin printing. But our old friends at Tier Time are trying to bring some new excitement into the plastic sausage industry. With an all new 3D printer that has practically nothing to do with its predecessor, except for its name and two linear rails. They call this 20 kg Hulk Cetus 2. And I'm told that this early prototype is far from finished, so here's some realistic puppeteering just in case we won't get it to move on its own. Either way, the bullet points, the key features are already visible, and I thought they were partially interesting, even for the non cetus fans. I'm telling you, they exist, believe it or not. We've got a stationary build platform now, making the printer more robust and needing fewer calibrations than the traditional Cetus. The build volume with 200 by 300 by 300 millimeters is much, much larger even than the extended Cetus one. The dual Z-axis linear bearings are of course enormously rigid, but very heavy and therefore expensive to ship. Behind them is a large steel sheet metal panel which as far as I can tell exists only to hold filament rolls and sensors. Another heavy component that's nice to have but not sure if it's worth it economically. The silent stepper motor drivers, the color TFT touchscreen and the borosilicate glass print surface are paid hardware options. They cost you 65 US dollars on top of the base price at the time I'm making this video. The Z axis is driven by a trapezoidal lead screw now. I think everybody who's coming from a belt driven Cetus 1 will appreciate that. Another hardware option is a strain gauge bonded to the extruder mounting bracket. A force sensor that should eventually allow auto calibration and collision detection. But I don't think the firmware knows about that just yet. Oh, but I just noticed, if I start the process with the computer software, it actually works. Cool. Using the extruder itself as a sensor tip is not only more accurate than a separate height probe, but also cheaper, I guess. The firmware is now living inside of an ESP32 module and the manufacturer promises that it will give the printer Wi-Fi capabilities in the future. The firmware is also said to be able to evaluate G-code from third-party slicers directly now. So the Linux discriminating OEM software is no longer mandatory. Nice. For the hardcore open sourcers, they are also planning a special open source CPU module with Octoprint compatibility and all that. The Linux discriminating OEM slicer might still give you the smoothest experience though. Up Studio 3 seems to be in continuous co-development with the hardware. And I would say it's already much more powerful than Cura for example. But it still needs a few bugs fixed and a usability improvement so that an experienced 3D printer operator can use it without reading the help pages. <laughs> so much about the basics. Meanwhile, the most exciting feature is hiding in here. It's a custom dual extruder with a single nozzle and short transitions. The manufacturer claims that that allows you to print multi-material models without a purge tower. This part is also a prototype with the single nozzle laser welded to the heaters. It's an interesting concept with some cost and complexity saving potential. If I'm not mistaken, E3D did it first with their Cyclops extruder, but that one is probably more voluminous, making sharp transitions impossible. In addition to short material transitions, I could imagine that this kind of extruder can also mix materials in varying proportions, intentionally to create weird hybrid plastics and colors. The software doesn't support that yet, so all I can show is normal operation with two materials. Here I'm trying to print a somewhat conductive shield for a DC to DC converter transformer. The conductive filament is expensive, so I don't want to waste it in support structures and drafts. To ease support separation later, I'm using a water-soluble PVA filament for that. The preset for that material is slightly hotter than the one I've selected for the conductive PLA in this case. And that reveals a limitation of this novel 2-in-1 extruder. It seems to wait briefly before every material change, while ramping up the temperature. There seem to be two separate heater cartridges, one per filament port. But because they are joined before the nozzle, at least in this early prototype, I don't think they can be operated with a large temperature difference between the two. I think plastics with similar printing temperatures like PLA and PVA should be printable together without waiting times. A combination like PLA and polycarbonate on the other hand would not work particularly well, because there's almost a hundred degrees Celsius difference in print temperatures. 
Anyway, by setting both materials to PVA I got rid of the pauses, and that resulted in an acceptable print quality. It's not spectacular or anything, but I trust that with the machine rigidity and some software tuning, spectacular is possible. We'll talk about the transformer another time. You can search for Wavetech 7000 if you can't wait. I also made good use of the large build volume to print a lock line adapter for my soldering fume extractor. This doubles as a test in 3D dimensional accuracy. And yeah, the fit feels perfect. Personally, I'm not that interested in visual stuff, but of course in that area this printer shows promise too. And that is a pretty good summary overall. The Cetus 2 has the potential to become a worthy successor to its line of quirky low-cost FDM printers, with an all-new repertoire of tricks up its sleeve. I don't think it makes sense to go into too much detail with an unfinished prototype, but I'm looking forward to the final retail version. If you want to pre-order one for yourself, you can make a donation on Kickstarter right now. The price might never be that low again. While I find tier time at the CETOS team trustworthy, I would recommend that you inform yourselves about the risks of the Kickstarter platform. And that is all, thank you for watching.